I'm here with our friend Kathleen Weiser from FoodNet, and we're going to hear a little bit more about the work and also about Kathleen's involvement in FoodNet. I wanted to introduce her first and let you know what we're doing today. So to get started, why don't you tell us just a little bit more about FoodNet and how it works? Okay, great. I've been in, involved with FoodNet for about eight years, and I started as a client going to get food, and I've uh, worked up to retirement now, so I volunteer. I am uh, serve on the board, and I also uh, serve as co-coordinator at our site. Oh, that's wonderful. How did you get involved in hunger work, or have, you know, have you served other organizations that were involved in hunger issues? Not really. Basically, I lost my job and uh, didn't have money to buy food. And so I used uh, FoodNet as a resource for myself, first of all. Okay. So that's, I mean, I think that's great because you probably knew a lot of the people already and got involved with the board. And, and that's a wonderful, wonderful way to give back to an organization that helped you when you lost your job. Absolutely. We are uh, 501c3, so we're 100% volunteers. We depend on our volunteers every week. How does that work then? Do they do the volunteers pick up the food from the different places that are donating it and then bring it to the location? Uh, yes, we have designated drivers and they have to wear a specific tag so the vendors know that they are there representing FoodNet. We pick up seven days a week and we give away the food seven days a week. Unlike the local food pantry, we deal with the perishable and all kinds of food. What Basically, kinds of places are donating mainly? Is it mainly grocery stores? Or? Primarily grocery stores, but also some bakeries, some restaurants. Right now, restaurants <laughs> light pickups there because Obviously, they've been hit yeah. right in the pocketbook, and if they don't have it, you know, they don't have it to donate. Of course. So primarily the grocery stores. Okay. Main resource. I think it's really great that you guys have seven days a week pickup because that makes it a lot more flexible. And I know that you have pickup sites all around the city also. Yes, it's all spread out throughout the city. How many pickup sites are there total? Actually, there's over a hundred. Not all of them are, are daily or weekly, or some are just on call as they have a product that is in excess, they overstocked on or something that's getting close to a sell date and mm -hmm. they need to move it. And So then you just find who needs it and take it to them? Right. Directly. We have one main person, Lois, that she answers the phone calls and, uh, and designates trying to get it to a site that's given away that day or the next day so we can get it out quickly. And we also do have a cooler that the Center for People in Need uh, lets us use for free. And so if we, most of our host sites are churches, some are community centers and that, but if we don't have enough refrigerator or freezer space, we can take it over to that cooler and utilize it overnight or something. Sure. So what would you say is FoodNet's biggest challenge during the pandemic? What has been the biggest obstacle or challenge? Uh, primarily, we have a couple sites that had to close down temporarily because the host site would not allow them mm -hmm. to have the clients come in. So now some of the sites have gone to giving outside in their parking lots. People just drive up and the stuff is prepackaged, sacked up or in a box and they drive up, it's put in their box and they're good to go. So it gets people in and out quickly with the least amount of, of touching and handling and people don't get, clients don't get to shop like they normally mm -hmm. would, but we're there to give away the food in the safest manner that we can. Right, I'm sure people are still grateful also for the, the, the help. Um, so and, that the main way that it's changed um, distribution is that 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 people don't get a shop; they more or less just get a box that is put into the back of their car and not. A few sites you come in, but most of the stuff will be already in a sack, and they just take the sack and move on down the line. And okay, anything left at the end of the day, uh, then produce that's not edible is either composted or it goes to a farmer for livestock. So nothing is wasted. That's great. 
for someone who's not familiar with FoodNet, can you tell us more about where the money would go? Uh, primarily it goes to supplies, permanent markers, uh, masks, gloves. We use a lot of sacks and bags and gloves and hand sanitizer mm -hmm. right now. So we're going through a lot of that kind of product. We really appreciate the fact that FoodNet is uh, available to people. And I have, I know personally several people that are helped with FoodNet on a weekly basis uh, until they got back on their feet, so. Right, and just, uh, you have to be 18 or over to come to FoodNet and uh, there's no red tape. You just sign in your first name and how many in your household. Oh, okay. That's good oh, to know. Have a volunteer that asks for names and writes down, so not everybody is touching the paper and pen. That keeps us track of how many we're serving then. Also require the clients coming through the line to wear a mask as well. And okay. most of them uh, have towels or sanitizer that they have to wipe their, wash their hands with those too before they go through distribution. Uh, you can actually, we serve as Crete, Denton, Milford, Seward, and Lincoln. So there's 18 different locations, two of which are temporarily closed. So you can look at our Facebook page okay. if you need food and uh, find out what time each day someone is distributing. And there is no limitation. If you need food every day, you could come every day. We don't ask for your income, your job, social security number, just okay. your first name and how many in your household. That's good to know. We also it have a food net. Uh, foodnetlincoln.org is our website. Okay. And of course, we we know that the need is greater right now than it was um, pre-pandemic. I think it's wonderful that there are more options <laughs> right now. And we're always looking for volunteers because a lot of our volunteers are senior citizens that are uh, more at risk too. Mm -hmm. So. So if somebody were wanting to volunteer their time, if they were not able to give money um, or both, how would they get in touch with you to talk about volunteering? Right, you could uh, contact us through Facebook. Okay, so if you're not able to do it every week at the same time, you might be able to get plugged in right, still for... randomly. Okay, or small groups of like youth groups and different church groups, I imagine. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, last year, our volunteer hours were over 85,000 hours. Wow. It takes a lot of people. Wow. As my father always said, adapt, improvise, and overcome. <laughs> That's awesome. So you come from a family of folks that were in the serving and giving back to their community, it sounds like. Absolutely. You bet. Yeah. yeah. How long have you lived in Lincoln? I've been here about uh, 40 years. Oh, wow. I love Lincoln. I think Lincoln's a wonderful community and I feel like there's a lot of support for our neighbors and it just feels like a nice place to raise children, for example. I always tell people that too. Uh, but we have our challenges just like anywhere, poverty and homelessness and, and hunger issues. And so it's really nice to connect with you and to find out more about the part you're playing to help relieve that. We try to use all our resources. We uh, recycled cardboard before it was ever mandatory. So kept that out of the landfill. So we're all about using all our resources. Our motto is tummy fill, not landfills. So I love it. We can keep and pass on or utilize for our clients. We certainly try and do that. I love that. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Kathleen. I really, I really appreciate it. Thank you and for this opportunity.